Welcome to R Programming 101. If this is the first time you've looked into using R, so R is a programming language, we use it for statistical analysis and data analysis, and this video is specifically for people that have literally never looked at R before. I'm gonna walk you through some of the basics. At the end of this video, you're gonna really feel comfortable with respect to what you can do with R and how to use it and how the kind of thinking works. How, does, how do people use R to do data analysis? I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I'm also gonna show you a few tips and tricks and you're gonna feel as if there are things that you can do with your data in R right from the word go okay so I'm gonna keep it simple you're gonna learn something stick with me you're gonna love this and I love R and at the end of it I think you're gonna kind of think, think to yourself that you love R too okay so stick with me if you want to learn about R programming then you have come to the right place on this YouTube channel we're creating R programming videos on everything let's look let's look at the console okay what we've got here is we've got up at the top, on the left, right over here, we've got what we call the source. This is where we write our code. And I've written some code just to illustrate how R works. The first line of code is I've typed in five plus six, and if I push control enter, we see down here in the console at the bottom, we see it, it's performed that like it would a calculator. Ignore the one in brackets. That's just telling us how many lines of answer is gonna pop up on the screen, so ignore that. Here's your answer, 11, five plus six is 11. That's the first lesson. R can be used. It is basically a very sophisticated calculator if you think about it like that. Okay, now let's take this a step further. We can say we can assign values. So if we just type in the letter A, we could type anything we wanted there and we use this little arrow, which is which is the greater than and the little dash, making it looks like an arrow. So we're saying take this value five and assign it to that letter A. And if I push control enter, you will see the little value a with 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 the value next to it right so that's the next lesson we can and we can assign anything to anything right it doesn't have to be just just a number that we can assign all sorts of complicated things so that you know you'll get used to what I, what I mean by that but the, the principle here is you can assign one thing to another fair enough and we assign six to b and then of course now we can say a plus b and once again of course we get 11. the next lesson is there are functions in other words, there's a whole lot of pre-built machinery that you can use. And the simplest one, just to, to illustrate the point, is sum, right? So we've got sum, and whenever you've got a function, you open and close the brackets, and inside the brackets, you put in what we call the arguments, right? So what is going? What is this function going to be applied to? Well, in this case, we want to apply the function sum to A and B, which we know we've assigned these values to. And of course, if we push Control, Enter, voila, as you would expect, it says 11. Right, simple, are you confused yet? No, of course you're not, because it is that simple. Okay, let's keep going. Next, we can take here, we, I'm creating a variable, but I want more than just one value assigned to that variable. I want there to be perhaps a string of values. And in this case, I'm calling it, uh, this is a variable and I'm, gonna, I'm calling it name and assigned to name. I've got two data points, Greg and Jill. And this little C here, this, the, the technical term is it stands for concatenation. Really think of it as that C is saying, name is gonna be a, a combination or a, a compilation of everything inside the brackets separated by a comma. And if I push control enter, voila, we've got name. It, it knows that th this is a character variable and then it, it'll, it'll tell you what they are right over there. So uh, I, in fact, the video you're watching, you, my, the video of my face is in the way, but behind, behind this, this picture of me, the first few data points in that variable. Right, and then of course, if we control enter on name, it will generate, it'll print them out down here. We can see Greg and Jill right there. Okay, so first lesson is it's a big calculator. You can assign one thing to the next and you can assign multiple data points to a single entity and that becomes a variable. Now, this is where things get exciting. I've done, I've created a bit of code here and I'll walk you through it, super duper simple. You're not confused yet? Of course you're not, because this is that simple, right? Here's a couple of variables I've made. We've said name and I've assigned a few, uh, three names to that. I've said age and I've assigned three ages, just numbers. And you'll notice because these are numbers, they're not needing the inverted commas because it's not a, a word or a string. R can pick up that that's a number. And then gender, I've just said M and F for male and female, right? So we've got uh, name, 
age and gender. And you can see in the environment over here, we can see age, gender, and name have popped up here. And we can see that they now exist in our environment. These are objects that we've got that we can work with, data objects of some description. So we've got these three variables, and we can put them together, right, in a data frame. And uh, we can give that data frame a name and that becomes another object that we can work with. And I've called this data frame friends, and I use the function data frame, and inside the brackets, I put the arguments of that function, and in this case, there's these three objects, name, age, and gender, and if I push control, enter, voila, in our environment on the right-hand side, you can see right here, a, a new object has been created. This is a data frame, and if I click on it, we can see here is our little data frame three variables, name, age, and gender, and we've got three rows, or sometimes we call them observations. Greg is 47 and he's male, etc. All right, this is a nice little simple data frame. A super quick interruption to this video to say thanks to Nested Knowledge. Nested Knowledge sponsor this channel and I absolutely love them. Nested Knowledge is an online platform that you can use to do literature review and systematic literature review. And what I love about this platform is that I'm using it for the entire process, beginning to end, all the way from search, screening, tagging, extraction, all the way through to actually writing the manuscript, creating a living document online. And I've got my entire team using it, so we collaborate, different people doing different parts of the process. I used to hate LitReview, now I love it. If you wanna love LitReview, check out Nested Knowledge, click on the link in the description below. And without further ado, on with the video. Okay, so now we're cooking with gas, we're working in R. Let's go back to our, our uh, this is, this is our, the little bit of code that we've written. Now, in R, if you want R to look at and do something with one variable in a data frame. So we've got three variables now, we've got name, age, and gender, but we wanna do something just with name, or just with age, or just with gender. And we wanna tell R how to look specifically at that variable, we use this little dollar sign. Right, so if we type in friends, that's the data frame. Dollar, which means that within that data frame, we want you to look at this variable name, which is the variable that we've created. If I push Control, Enter, you'll see down here, it prints out all of the items or the data points within that variable. Okay, that's interesting. What if we wanted to subset? We wanted to extract out a part of this data frame. Now, I'm gonna show you something, and it might seem a little bit complicated, but don't worry, because within a few seconds, I'm gonna show you a much, much easier way to do the same thing. Now you have to understand the basics. In other words, I've got to walk you through this kind of subsetting using the square brackets. Don't panic, don't feel anxious. In literally 30 seconds, I'm gonna make this so simple. It's gonna be super duper easy. So stick with me. Okay, if I take the data frame friends and I wanna take out a certain row or a certain variable or a certain combination of rows and variables, right? How do I tell R what part of that data frame to look at? Well, we can have these two square brackets next to it with a comma in the middle, right? And in the space before the comma, I tell R which rows I want to extract, or I want to include in this opportunity to look at this data frame. So before the comma are the rows, or the observations, and after the comma, it's the variables, right? You got it? Okay, so, and if I left that completely blank, if I left nothing in either of those spaces, and I just push Control Enter, it would assume that I want everything. Right, so leaving it blank means it gives me everything down here. Okay, if I put something in here, if I put a number one, it's gonna say, okay, we want the first row and all of the columns, because we've left the columns blank. So control enter, there we go, just the first row pops up in our console down there. If I put a number one after the comma, that means you know, it telling R what, what columns I want to look at, control enter, it just, it's just taken out one data point because that is the, the first row and the first column, there's just one cell or one data point and that's just my name, Greg, right there. Okay, I could put one, two, three, and then it would control enter and then it's selected all three, it's selected, the column it's selected is the first column, so it's the name column, and it went, I've asked for all three observations, and that's what's happened right there. And I, I don't wanna to waste too much time here, but I could ask just for the first column, but all three, uh, the first row, but all three columns, and, and that's what it's done right there. Okay, so that's how we can kind of subset and ask for bits and pieces of the data frame. We can add to that, we can say friends, 
in the columns that we want to select or subset, if we say friends, dollar sign age, so with respect to the age variable, if it's less than 50, select those and then select these columns of there, the first and second column, right? Now that seems a little bit complicated and I know this looks a bit messy and you feel as if, oh my goodness, now we're getting into this programming language and I'm already confused. Don't be, because in a few seconds I'm gonna show you a much easier way to do this. I just want you to understand how it is that we do this. So let's push Control Enter. And that's what's happened here. It's looked for any rows where the age is less than 50, so there's just two of those, and it's taken out just the column for name and age. So we've subsetted our data set quite neatly there. But I agree, looking at that, it does look a little confusing. So let's look at a much easier way to do exactly the same thing. Okay. In R, this is the next lesson I want to teach you. And you're not going to get too much into this yet, but I want you to have hope. See the future. This is where you're going. In R, there are lovely packages that you can install that help you, that give you, expand your vocabulary, that make R easier and easier to use. And the best one, if you say, if you've installed the Tidyverse, and incidentally, you need to at some point install the Tidyverse. And, and it's as simple as saying, it's, it's really as simple as, as typing in install packages and then you would you would say inverted commas tidy verse like that and you would push enter and it would install the tidy verse right it, it would put it onto your computer and you'd never have to do that again you only have to do that once it's then it's there and you've got it right but then every time you want to use it at the beginning of your programming session you would say library which means use this package and the tidy verse is actually a whole collection of packages it's great and we push control enter and it's, R is going to say, okay, I'm going to go and fetch the tidyverse and get all of that additional vocabulary and use that. Now, don't worry, you don't have to be able to use these packages yet. I just want to show you where this is going so that you feel as if using R isn't complicated, it is easy, I can do this, right? And you're going to see why it's so easy right now. When you're working within the tidyverse, it's a whole different ballgame. Now we're starting, we're saying, let's start with, with the data frame friends. And this little thing, it's called a pipe operator. It looks confusing, but believe me, it's your best friend. It's basically percent greater than percent. Think of that as just saying, and then, right? Because it pipes in whatever's from the left-hand side of the pipe operator into what's ever next to it on the right-hand side. And, and by the right-hand side, I also mean underneath. That's fine. All right. So we say friends, and then select, because we want to select just two of the rows, name and age, and then filter my age is less than 50. And if we stop there, okay, and push control, enter, voila, we get exactly the same as what we got. This here we got by doing friends and open square brackets, ba -da -da, ba -da -ba -da, complicated, right? By doing the exact same things with just this very easy to understand language, this very natural language of select these columns and, and filter by this criteria, we'll end up with the exact same little extract, the exact same subset. So it's super easy, really nice. And then we can add other things to it. Like, you know, for, exa for example, we can say, and then arrange by age. And you see, originally we've got, it's arranged, you know, the 47 is above the 34, but now if we, if we run it, it's doing it smallest to largest arranged in size order of age. Okay, look, I know we've covered quite a lot. What I'm hoping is that you've seen, first of all, R is super easy to use. It's not complicated, right? Once you've got your head around these principles, everything else is basically an, an expansion of what I've just shown you. And the exciting thing is now that I've introduced you to the idea that there is the tidyverse and there is, are these packages and there is this expanded vocabulary that really uses a very natural language to do things. Now that you've seen that that is possible, as you learn R, at least you kind of know where you're going. You can be like, okay, I have to learn some of the basics, but I'm very quickly going to learn how to use th these packages, like for example, the tidyverse, and I'm going to really start getting into a version of R which is intuitive, which uses a lot of natural language, which is really not complicated at all. You're gonna love it, I love it. Get into it. Thank you for watching the video. Don't ever change, don't do drugs, always do your best. Watch the next video. Take care, speak to you soon, bye.